In this video, we'll see the force and acceleration relationship by evaluating some pulley system, which is justified here. So at the equation, say that determine the initial accelerations of the 15 kg block if in the case of a tension is 23 newton and then b tension is 26 newton so the system is initially at rest with no slack in the cable and then the mass and the frictions of the pulleys are negligible so the equation is this one if you see this animation when we apply a force over this tension and then this mass will go into the right direction so once we apply that since there is a frictional force both static and kinetic friction First, we have to check whether the system can move or not. The system to be moved, the force applied on the tension should be maximum or it should be enough for starting this object that is more than the frictional force which attached the block with the horizontal wall. So this is the animation. We can just see it again and then look into which part is applied and then the tensional cable or the cable here is in which direction. Let's see this one again. Imagine when we pull these parts in this direction so the cable or the tight the overall cable will pull the system into the right direction and then if you look over the directions of the tension so they are all in the right direction part so let's see how we could solve this system now let's just take out the given parameters so from the given one we know that both the static friction coefficient and then the kinetic friction coefficients are given as this one so the static is 0 0.5 and then the kinetic friction coefficient is 0 0.4 and the mass of the object is given also it's 15 kg and then the angle theta is also given as such degree and then tension is given in two cases for case a that means for t is equals to 23 newton and for case b it is given as t for 26 newton so those are the given parameters once we know this let's just see what the required part the required part is just to evaluate the accelerations of the system because it said that determine the initial accelerations of a 50 kg block so required required then this is for case A and for case B. Let's evaluate the acceleration. The acceleration in when the case A and then case B. That means when tension is 23 and then 26 Newton. So we have to evaluate the acceleration into both cases. Before we are trying to solve everything or just analyzing the system, we have to know that whether the system can be moved by the implications of the tension force T here. Now, if you look over here, tension is applied at a 30 degree. Now it's just looked over this one. So whether this force is capable or not should be first identified here. Now to do that, let's check whether the tensional force or the minimum force that is required for initiating the system from rest, because it is first at rest and then that's why this static friction coefficient is given here so we have to know that now what the maximum frictional force the static frictional force applied on the box now let's take out the free body diagram and then once we do that we can just do what we want to do now this is the free body diagram for the given rectangle now once we have this let's see what is the tension or the force that could be exist in the cable and then applied over the block? Now, if you look just like this one, when we pull these parts into the right direction, so every tensional force over the string or over the cable will pull the block into this three direction. That means we'll have this part and this tensional force. The three forces will be applied over that system so we'll have in this direction we have this is the first one is t this is also t and then this is that means we have two t's here two t or two times the tensional force and then the other one the uh, x components of this tensional forces will be also applied into the right direction 
That means plus the t components of x, that is t times cos 30 degree. So this is a tensional force, the total tensional force, which is applied over the spring when we try to just figure out the free body diagram. Once we have this, let's just look what will be the weight and what will be the normal force. So the normal force is n, which is, is equals to mg in this case, because this is on the vertical direction. We know that the weight is in the downward direction and this is, is equals to mg. So if you just sum up the vertical forces, that means summation of force in the y direction is equal to zero. Let's see the upper one is positive. So that is n minus mg is equal to zero. There is no any vertical force or vertical load. So due to this one, normal force will be is equal to mass times gravity. So this is the equation that is generated just like this one. So we know that. And then there is also a frictional force which opposes the motions of the object. We have two types of frictional force, as you know that. The first one is the static friction. That means the object before try to move. So there is a, a static friction. And then once it starts moving, then there will be a kinetic friction. So the first thing is we have to check whether the applied tensional force is capable for moving this object or not. So to do that, let's see the maximum frictional force that could be resist the motions of the object, that is static friction. So that static friction is evaluated just like this one. We know that static friction Fs is equals to coefficient of static friction times normal force. So if we just substitute the numerical value, just 0.5 times mg. So to do this, let's evaluate the mass times gravity component first. That means from the normal force, we know that normal force is the mass times gravity, that is 15 kg times 9.81 meter per second square. So if, if you evaluate that, we can get the normal force as 147.15 Newton. This is a normal force. So when you evaluate the frictional force, which is the static one, so 0.5 times this 147.15 Newton will become 73.57 Newton. So there is 73.57 Newton in the directions of the left one that is a frictional force, static friction. So once we have this, now let's try to figure out whether the system is in moving or not. If the force is exit this, that means 73.57, then the object can move. So how we could just know this one? So to know this, let's see for both cases. Now for case A, for case A, that means in the case A, we know that tension is given as 23 Newton. So let's see the overall right direction forces. Let's say that force is as Fx. If the summations of all these forces are just Fx, if we call it as Fx, let's see that one. So Fx is equals to 2t plus t cos 30 degree. So if you substitute just the numerical values, which is 2 times 23 plus 23 times cos 30 degree. So if you sum up these forces, we can get the total tension force that's just denoted with Fx, and then it will become 65.92 Newton. Now let's compare these two parts. Now the Fx is 65.92, but the frictional force is 73.57. So this force cannot just move the object because the object had the maximum of static friction force that resists the motion with 73.57 Newton. So in this case, the object is not, we can conclude that the object is not moving. So there is no motion, no motion. And then there is no motion. There is no acceleration in this case. So the acceleration will be zero. And then for the second case, for case B, let's see that one. For case B, now let's evaluate the total horizontal force applied on the system. 
we know that tension is given as 26 newton so if t is 26 newton so we will have force in the x direction will be equals to 2 times tension is now 26 newton plus 26 times cos 30 degree now if you calculate these numerical values then you will get as a force it is 74.52 newton so this is just the force the overall force due to the tension t so if we compare this now for this system we have the static frictions of 73.57 but the total horizontal force is 74.52 so this is greater than the previous one so fx is greater than fs we know this condition once we just know that the object could move so we don't worry about the static friction now we are considering the kinetic friction because the object is under motion if the object is under motion the friction will be a kinetic friction that is fk and then how we could evaluate fk we know that frictional force for the kinetic part is equals to coefficients of kinetic friction times normal force now the coefficients of kinetic friction is given as 0 0.4 times and then the normal force is previously evaluated and then it was 147.15 so times 147.15 newton and then if you just calculate this number then you will get 58.86 newton this is the kinetic friction that's applied on the block so if the block is having the implications of fx is now we calculated it before for the cases of 26 and newton tension force it was 74.52 newton and then the frictional force is in the opposite direction we know that so fk is equal to 58.86 newton now once we have this let's just evaluate the acceleration now as we know that Submissions of force in the x direction is equal to mass times acceleration in that direction. Now the submissions of force in the x direction will be fx minus fk because the kinetic friction is opposing the motions of the direction and then it will become mass times acceleration. In this case, the mass of the object is 15 kg, so 15 times accelerations of the system. So if you just Insert the numerical value 74.52 newton minus 58.86 newton is equal to 15 times acceleration. Now, this will become now 15 times acceleration is equal to 15.66. So, if you just cancel this 15 into this way, so finally you will get the accelerations of the system is 1.04 meter per second square since all the units are in the SI unit finally you will get the answer in the SI unit so this is it